Today you're seeing probably one of the most fun makeup brands in my collection. Benefit, I don't know anyone who doesn't love the packaging. Even if they, in the end you don't like the product, you cannot dispute that the packaging is just ultra, ultra cute. I have some things that are gone now that you can no longer get and as well as items that are currently available and you've seen the sweep of the table so in no particular order I'm just going to start with the products that are closest to me and move my way out. So the three things I've got closest are these lip gloss. These came out uh, to associate with each of their box blushes and I got four of them. I had a bunch of them in minis but I gave those away during the giveaway. So in full size I have the Dandelion, the Bella Bomba, the Coralista, and the Hula. Now I will say this about these though, they aren't particularly pigmented, so it's really about a subtle flush, but what I love them for is if you're doing like outdoor activities in the summer, you're just, you know, sitting out on a deck having a coffee or a cocktail, um, they're a nice light coverage and they give you a bit of shine and a tiny bit of color that will subconsciously uh, coordinate with your cheeks. I also have five of these lip gloss. I don't think these are available anymore. I forget what they call these, um, but I loved the names of them. This one was Almost Famous, which is a movie I love. It's like a real bronzy color. This is Who Are You Wearing? Really bright kind of flat pink. Foxy Lady. Little Jimi Hendrix reference there and that's kind of a a more glittery peach. Life on the A-list, which is a really beautiful nude. And I'm with the band. So some great kind of rock and roll and fame related names on these glosses. These were a great gloss. If they have uh, done away with them, I'm not exactly sure why. Um, they had doe foot applicators and um, not a lot of color, but a lot of great shine that lasted. Then I have two small lip glosses. These came out of a palette. We may come across the palette they came out of and they're missing from it, or I might have already used up the palette they're from, I can't remember. But this is one that I have in large life on the A-list, and this is called Juicy Coral, which is a really pretty coral color. And we all love the Benetints and the many uh, spin-offs of the Benetints. And then last year they came out with these lip balms. I have two of the full size. Uh, this is the Benetint Benabalm, and so Benabalm and Lolly Balm to go after the Lolly Tint and the Benetint. Again, not super, super pigmented. You know, that you can barely see that. But if you're looking for just kind of a subtle wash of color on the lips, it's great. The other thing it's great for is I'm not a big believer in young, young girls wearing full stripper face makeup. Uh, tiara, toddlers and tiaras I am not a fan of. So if you have young girls who really, really want to get into makeup, I think these are a really nice option. It looks like, you know, beautiful packaging. It looks like grown up makeup, but it'll just leave a little bit of a flush on the lip. They had these eyeliners for a while and they don't think they have these anymore. This is in dark brown and it had a smudger on one side and a mechanical pencil on the other. And it's just a nice dark brown. Nothing to write home to mom about. Just your typical eyeliner. Then of course everyone went crazy for the their real push-up liners. I have it in purple and I have it in black. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know my thoughts on these. The mini versions of these I love. I use them really easily. For some reason these full size I struggle with. My other complaint with the purple one is when they came out with the colored ones, I expected that color to really pop, but you can barely tell that it's a color once you get it on your eye. They're very muted colors, so I would have preferred a little bit more pop. Now we're getting into some pencils that I'm not sure still exist. One I know for sure doesn't. This is Highbrow, which is great. I think they actually have this now in two colors, and it's just a really bright, bright pencil that you can highlight your brow with and blend it in. You can highlight your inner corner or you can do your waterline. Really makes the eyes pop. This one is Eye Bright, which is kind of specifically for this inner corner. And it's a little bit pinker, you can see there, than the high brow is. And I love that on my inner rim or on my inner corner. This was a bad gal eyeliner. I love it. It's a fat black liner. And when you want just a real messy black eyeliner, 
with a leather jacket and jeans, this is the this is the jam. The bad gal liner, and I love that it was pink and black. Now this I'm not sure that they have anymore. This is the Definer de Liner, and it's one of those clear waxy pencils to outline your lip so that your lipstick doesn't bleed. Now this is the part of the video that I want to call Dear Benefit, please, please, please bring it back. I believe that Benefit was out ahead of the game on a couple of products and because of that they didn't sell well. So Benefit stopped putting them out. But then the beauty world caught up and now there's all kinds of samples of it out there and Benefit no longer has it. So the two things I'm talking about are the Powder Flage and this pencil. I'm going to start with Powder Flage. There's nothing left in this. You've seen it in an empties. I, I don't even want to let the container go. I feel like someday I'm going to have a chance to meet somebody from Benefit and I can throw myself on their mercy. Powder Flage, when they came out with it, it came in this little camouflage can. It's just a little round thing full of a pale, pale, very shimmery, very, very fine pink powder. And it had the tiniest little white fan brush that came with it. The bristles were white and the brush itself was pale, pale pink. And the idea was to either set your um, under eye concealer with it or to actually use it as an under eye concealer you know on, on late makeup days instead of actually using concealer. At that time no one outside of professional makeup artists really had ever heard of setting your concealer. Now it's like a given. Everybody sets their concealer. Bobbi Brown has that yellow powder she does it with. Uh, some people are doing the full baking under the eyes. Uh, Laura Mercier has the eye brightening powder which I wear under my eyes now that this is gone. But this was the best at that. And I really think Benefit, if you brought this back now that we understand the meaning of it that it would sell and I'm, I'm hoping and praying I can't wait to see it and this is the other product like that it's no longer available it's called Cupid's Bow by Benefit and I think when this came out people in the real world people outside of the makeup industry did not get about contouring the lips you know I think the most any of us did was maybe put a dark lip liner and some bright gloss in the middle we called that contouring this now everybody knows to highlight the cupid's bow right everyone's putting their highlighter there this was ingenious because on one end it had that highlighter to highlight on the top of the cupid's bow and then on the other end <clears throat> this dark color for right under here i'm not going to do it because i don't have a mirror and that's not a good enough viewfinder but you just right under the lip you color it in and then there was a brush that came with this that you would smudge it with and then when you just were looking straight on it looked just like a shadow under your lip which made that bottom look, lip look so much fuller and again when it came out I don't think everyday women had a sense of that everyday women weren't doing a lot of that work on their lips but now if you watch YouTube you know everybody is doing that kind of work around their lips so benefit if you came out with this again, I think it would sell. Now the mascara that I loved the most by Benefit was this. I only have it in two tester sizes. I've not opened these yet. Um, and I'm not going to right now, but they had a beautiful big brush on them. It was called Bad Gal Lash. It reminded me the brush a bit of um, Christian Dior, Dior Show mascara. I love these, so I will enjoy when I finally crack these open using up the final ones of these. Then they went to the Their Real Mascara, and I really like this too. I have two uh, unopened tubes of it. I love it, just not as much as that bad gal lash. I really love the roller lash too, but I don't have one right now. I just used one up about a month ago, and I have so much mascara, I cannot buy any new mascara. Probably tell them 60. This is a cult favorite. No secret to anyone, the poor professional. I have three tubes of it, two regular size and a tester. One of the best facial primers on the market. We all love it, we all know it. No point in talking about it any further. Then I also have this Stay Flawless facial primer. This one um, had mixed reviews. I think where people were confused with it is how to use it. Uh, and a lot of people didn't like that you were going back to your face every time with it. Uh, you know, in terms of getting contamination on it. But if you figured out how to use it, which for me it was just like drawing it on and then smoothing it in with my hands. It actually was a great primer with it and left a beautiful finish on the face. And then of course they came out with their The Pore Professional Agent Zero Shine, which is a powder for the face, which is kind of like the weirdest packaging ever because it's powder, but there's the holes. 
and it looks like it's in a tube and then like under the butt is the little brush and you kind of the packaging here is a bit too gimmicky but the product is nice license to blot uh, the professional. This is getting a lot of bad reviews and I think I know exactly why. This is very much like Milani's product that looks like wax that you use to set or to freshen up your makeup through the day. And the idea with this is like to make these little strokes on your face. People do not like doing that because then your makeup is getting here, you're streaking, eh. But the, the consistency of this is just like that product. So what I've been trying to do to make it work for me is to either with my finger blot or to take a little sponge and blot that way, the same way that I would use the Milani. So a, a, a great product, I think the packaging is a fail. This is a wonderful highlighter, what's up? My only complaint is I got this in a tester and it fell apart on me, which kind of bummed me out. But on one end is the highlighter and on the other end is a really nice sponge you can use to blend it and I like the whole what's up, like the play on wattage um, and very, very cute packaging. This is the fine one one. Um, it's this really beautiful rose gold packaging. Then when you open it up, it's like a highlight and two blush colors in one. And I really liked it in terms of you could kind of streak it down your cheeks and then blend with your fingers to get a really nice glow. But I have to admit, it does take a bit of practice to get used to using it. I then have Puff Off, which I really like. And it looks just like an iron. And it's a, it's a primer for under the eyes. I really like the Smashbox primer for under the eyes. But this one is pretty nice as well. And the uh, metal tip does give you a bit of a cooling effect. Then in terms of facial primers, of course, they had that gal. This is a full-size one, not opened up. And this is a small tester size, which is a great face primer. When they first came out with this as well, people weren't heavy into face primers yet. People weren't sure how to use it. And then slowly people got on board. And then they came out with Girl Meets Pearl, uh, which gives you a bit of a more luminous base. One hot minute. It came out the same time as that fine one. One. It's in this pretty metal can that looks like a clock. And inside it's a loose bronzing powder. This really took off when it came out. Major Majorette. This, of course, the uh, cream to powder blush, and it looks like a little majorette drum. And it was in that beautiful hot coral. And the Big Easy, which is their answer to the BB Bomb. Um, it's liquid to powder. Love these. Oh, I wish they would bring them back. I think I saw one of them back, actually, right before the holidays. I think the original came back. This is my favorite one. This is called Kitten. And this is called Kitten Goes to Paris. And what is so very cool about this, it's called a sparkly powder in a puff by Benefit. So when you take the top off, it looks like these old fashioned powder puffs. You take the top off, there's this beautiful puff in here sitting on some crinoline. So you're thinking, well, it's a puff. I don't get it. Where's the product? The product is inside. Can you see the sparkle? I don't know if you can actually see it there. It's kind of all, well, I'll see if I can. Anyway, if you can't see it, I'm sorry, but it's this really cool powder puff where the sparkly powder, I see my arm is all sparkly now, um, is inside the puff. So it's not one of those ones where you drop it on the bathroom floor and you lose all the powder. And this one, of course, in the purples and pinks, for Kitten Goes to Paris, and the puff is purple. Again, sitting on black crinoline. And then lovely glitter powder. It smells really good, too. I love these. I will never let these go. Then for a long time, they had this Bathina line that they always, always had. And I had a beautiful shower cap with the Bathina um, kind of little logo on it. It was like a little woman in a bathtub. And then they did away with it. They also had Bathina bubble bath. Oh my goodness, what a smell, what a smell, what a smell. 
bring it back pretty please i was happy to be able to get this which is the bathina soft to touch hard to get which is like a dry oil but it leaves a really nice uh, sheen on your skin so when you take the lid off it's just a spray and then also this perfume called maybe baby which almost smells like bathina it's just a little bit more perfumey smelling, but oh my goodness, if they would bring that bubble bath back, I'd be all over that, like white on rice, and that's just called Maybe Baby. Then they came out with all their cute little perfumes that look like martini shakers, which if I wouldn't let myself go crazy, I would have bought them all just to have them because of what they looked like. But in reality, when I got down to smelling them, I didn't like them all, but I did like this one, which is called Garden of Good and Eva which has this pretty poppy motif on a green background. And it's so cute, it's like a martini shaker. And then you squirt there, it's so cute. In that Bathina line though, back when they had that um, bubble bath, they had this, and she was what was on the bubble bath. Bathina Body So Fine by Benefit, a velvet body balm. And you open it up, and I'll take the, covering off I've kept the covering I've used this for years and I still have like a pound of it left on this side is this beautiful black puff it's I've just washed it so it's clean and over here it's like a it smells like Bathina it's just that it's a body balm and it, it has a bit of highlighting Again, I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up in this light but it really makes the, like if you want your legs to look long and slender, you go right down your shin bone with it. It just has a beautiful look to it and a really beautiful feel to it. I noticed that they stopped carrying that and I was bummed because I use it all the time on stage. But then they came out with a smaller version of it. This is Bathina, take a picture, it lasts longer and instead of in her boudoir, she's on the cricket pitch there. And when you open this one up, it's a smaller version, which I think makes more sense because, like I said, I've been using that one for years. This is a smaller with a smaller puff. And it's there's, it's really heavy. There's so much product. But I guess if you did your whole body, I use it on stage. Maybe if I used it in the boudoir, I'd go through it much quicker. I have a tiny little sample of the Posy Balm, which is the lip balm to match the Posy tint. And this is an old standard that everyone loves, boing. It was a cult concealer for years and years and years. I used that for years until they came out with a race paste. And then I fell so in love with the race paste, I never got back to boing, which is why this still looks brand new. One of the things I always loved about Benefit, other than the fact that two women founded it, uh, was the idea of where it got started. That they lived like in an apartment building where there was a stripper living upstairs or downstairs or whatever. He, in their PR they call it now an exotic dancer, but whatever, she was a stripper, no shame in that. And the stripper was asking them about something to rouge her nipples that wouldn't run when you sweat. Because if you use regular blush to rouge them, it would run. So she wanted something that would give her nipples that flush but that would stand up to sweat and that's when the Ford sisters discovered or put together the product Benetint which was their original product and it's a stain for the cheeks and lips or nips or anywhere else you want to use it. Unbelievably as I laid my whole collection out I don't have a bottle of the original Benetton. I've had it a million times over the years. I bought it when that's all they had, but for some reason right now in my collection I don't have it. I do, however, have I think every one of the spin-offs that came. So the Posy tint, which has that coral stain to it. The Cha-Cha tint, which is kind of coral and bronzy. The Lolly tint, which is just a super pink tint. High Beam, which they refer to as supermodel in a bottle. And before everyone else came out with highlighters, I used to use this to highlight my face. And then Sunbeam, which is a great bronzing uh, kind of stain. And so all of those I love and would recommend. I think they're amazing, particularly in summer when you're sweaty. Because once you get them on, they stain the skin. And even if you sweat and most of your makeup comes off, the flush will stay. Now we're going to get into the blushes and first I want to show you this one which my beautiful wife bought for me for Christmas last year. This was the cheeky sweet spot when you opened it up it had this cute little kind of bakery motif on the inside. I'll take the plastic off of it. And inside it had the little mini 
brush and their little brushes actually aren't bad you can use those in a pinch and then the what's up highlighter up here and then six of their box blushes all in one collection so you got hula which is an amazing um, contour powder coralista um, sugar bomb bella bamba dandelion and rock uh, just such a cute palette. I haven't even used it because it's one of those ones where I'm kind of scared to use it up because it's so pretty. I want to keep it in my collection and also I have all of these in large. So we'll start with Hula. Um, Hula is probably the first and original flat bronzer. Almost all bronzers had shimmers until Hula came out and everybody got so into using it as a bronzing powder. Other companies started then getting on board with flat bronzers. Until I had Hoola, I used to use this Ben Nye really dark brown contour powder, which was a little dark for me. This one suits my face much, much better. And of course, they come in these gorgeous little boxes. Dandelion was one of those originals, which when it first came out, people weren't sure, is this a blush or is it a powder? And they actually refer to it as a brightening face powder. So you could technically use it all over your face to just brighten up, or if you go heavy with it, it does give you a bit of a blush effect. Georgia was also one of the originals. A just peachy face powder. They call these all face powders. And that's what it was, just a very pale, pale peach blush, which again, you could warm your whole face with it or use it heavily on the cheeks to get a bit of a flush. I think probably their best of all time, Dallas, this cool cover on it. This one is uh, an outdoor glow for an indoor gal face powder. It's sort of halfway between a blush and a bronzer and that's how I like to use it. I like to just kind of keep it in this area and it you don't have to use both. You can just have that one product and there's just a really beautiful color to this. It uh, I love that they call it Dallas because it does give me a little bit of that 80s feel but but I still think totally totally doable in 2016. Then the last one of the very originals I have is 10 and this was amazing and all those little brushes that come in them I took them out of the rest of them I kept this one and you'll see why they describe this as bronzing and highlighting face powder duo and it's called like a 10 as in a perfect 10 and there's like a picture of a woman's waist whittled out and this little brush the reason I kept it in, you can see that the brush is light on one side and dark on the other because the powder is cut that way. So if you sort of get it in here like this and then you get it on there like that, then you can just take a buffing brush to buff it out so you don't have two streaks. But it puts the highlighter up top and the bronzer down below, which automatically slims the face. And I thought that was great. It, it had a gimmick, but it also was really, really useful. Then we get into the newer generation of the blocks blushes. Uh, Coralista came onto the market with a bang. Everybody was into it. Really cute packaging. Described as a Rio Pleasure face powder. And it was a coral, but much more electric than that Georgia Peach. And I can't remember the order all these came out with, but when Throb came out, that was very cool. I love this packaging. Looks like the laces on a corset. And it's basically, and I love that, and then underneath it looks like fishnet. I remember someone being all scandalized by the packaging. I cannot be, I cannot imagine being like 25 years old and being that conservative. It's fishnets in a corset. Get over it. Some people are into it. Some people are very sexual. <laughs> um, and the idea of this is it's made to make your face look the way you flush when you've just had a fantastic orgasm, which is why it's called Throb. And so it's just a really beautiful pink that puts a real pop of colors on the cheeks. And I say you can also blush other areas with those. And that doesn't scandalize you too much. And on the side, this is described as a turned on face powder. And then they came out with Sugar Bomb, which again, people totally got into. Sugar Rush Flush face powder. And this is the first time we saw the quad. There's four different colors in there meant to be all swirled together. There's like a sort of like a deep dusty rose, almost an orangey coral. The deeper coral, deeper pink, and all together makes a really beautiful blush. Then Hervana came, which I really love the packaging. It reminded me of that old George Burns movie. What is it? All Dogs Go to Heaven? Or um, I'm probably dating myself. It's way back in the 80s, early 80s. 
uh, a good karma face powder and now you see the packaging changes it's no longer separated it's a lid that you pop open and they put a mirror up in there and that's got a swirl of all matte colors and then Bella Bomba look at this packaging it's so beautiful described as a 3d brightening pink face powder again all one piece and it is just a really gorgeous super bright pink and probably my favorite Rockateur and a great packaging again you've got what looks almost like croc skin here and then pink with black lace over the top I love that packaging famously provocative cheek powder it's another one of the ones where it's connected and it's a super super shimmery blush so when you wear this you don't really need highlight now we're gonna get into what I loosely call palettes or kits. Benefit has never come out with like a big eyeshadow palette, but they've always put together kits. Um, I'm gonna start first with the actual, what I would call small eyeshadow palettes. This one is called Pika Bright Eyes. It's an eye illuminating kit. It's pretty and pink on the inside with the, with the uh, mirror. There's two brushes. Benefit brushes are always wonderful in these kits. And here you have that eye bright that I showed you in the pencil and they were smart in putting it under plastic to keep it moist and to keep the powder off it. And then three really gorgeous shades, a shimmery pink, a brown and a beige to really make your eyes pop and look bright. And what a great little palette to just tuck in the bag and take with you. Then they have the big beautiful eyes. This is my third version of big beautiful eyes. So this is how much I love this one. And in this one, again, a mirror on the top, you get a big thing of boing uh, concealer, and then these gorgeous three colors. And the fact that I have used this up twice before this, I mean, with a collection the size of mine, to actually use something to the bottom, I mean, you know I love it. This is my third one of it. I've had this for a long time. It's called the Smoke and Eyes a Sexy Eye and Brow Makeover Kit and it comes, the cardboard comes off and then inside they had a little pamphlet to show you how to use it. And then when you open this up, you get a mirror that I have smashed on a trip to Seattle. I cracked that all to hell. But inside, oh so cute, see if I can do it here so I don't wreck it. A pair of tweezers in the bottom, the eye bright brightening cream right here, eyebrow powder right there, a black mini eye pencil, a brush with fluffy on one side and for the eyebrows on the other and then up here an eyeliner and two eyeshadows so everything you need to make this very cool smoky eye now before I get into the rest of the kits and shadows I forgot I almost forgot to show you this stuff I had to send Denise into the makeup room to get it I have some brow products from Benefit I have their brow pencil um, which is the instant brow pencil and it just has a spoolie on one end and a pencil on the other. I've used both shades of their brow gel and love it. Just right now I'm using a Clinique because it, it comes in a darker shade but the formula of the Clinique one is not as good as the Benefit. And then I bought this little Benefit Browsings it was called. When you open it up there is tweezers, two little applicator brushes and then a brow wax and a brow powder. I've used that a lot. And then Brows A Go Go is another one of these ones that come in the little sleeve. And this was a great brow kit. A mirror in the top. I'm trying to keep this stuff from falling out. A little mini set of tweezers in the bottom. The eye bright and the high brow, which help you highlight. And then another eyeliner, a brush, and then across the top there's an eye wax right here and then the light and the dark brow powder and if you remember they came out with these this is the benefit world famous neutrals and it looks like a little book you can put it on your shelf and when you open it up there's a mirror up here two cream eyeshadows and then four powder eyeshadows so that one was world famous neutrals most glamorous nudes ever this one is world famous neutrals easiest nudes ever and again when you open it this one I left this when you buy it it comes with this tips and tricks but when you tear those off you're left with your mirror if you choose to tear them off inside two cream shadows and four 
powder shadows. And finally, world famous neutrals, sexiest nudes ever. And I love the packaging on this because it's this purpley pink. And same thing, the mirror, two cream shadows and four powder shadows. These aren't very, I think these are maybe two years old. Uh, this is the Benefit Go Tropicoral kit. Very cool packaging. When you open it up, there's a mirror on top. Inside is a mini of the Coralista lip balm, one of the mini brushes, the Coralista blush, a little mini bottle of high beam, and a little mini bottle of Cha Cha Tint. So kind of you can, you know, throw that in your bag and you kind of have the base of your face taken care of. They came out with these in a, in a bunch of their themes and I bought three of them. I also have this really pretty one, which is Feeling Dandy, pink and, pink and green packaging. Mirror. Inside it's the Dandelion lip gloss, the brush, the Dandelion powder, the high beam, and the posy tint. Sugarlicious. Pretty packaging. Sugar Bomb Lip Gloss, the brush, Sugar Bomb Blush, the High Beam, and the Benetint. So there, I do have a tiny little bottle of the original Benetint. Oh, and I loved this palette. This was the Matthew Williamson palette, and when I bought this, it came with a Matthew Williamson coffee table book, a Matthew Williamson tote bag, and then this palette was in it. The design of the palette is gorgeous. On the back, it says, Benefit and international fashion designer Matthew Williamson. Flash you back to the glamorous days of disco with rich, seductive shades inspired by his vibrant prints. It's modern decadence. It has a mirror in the top here, and I used the mascara that was in it. That's gone. But this foreshadow quad is so gorgeous uh, with the blush, and then this is a... A gloss I've never seen sold separately called Inferno and it, it reminds me of Disco Inferno. I use this a lot. You can see that one's well loved. I think this was a Christmas palette maybe two or three years ago. It's called Groovy Kind of Love. It has that cute little motif on the front. I have a bunch of the square tins from Benefit too that are in there. I'm not going to drag those out. I have a whole bunch of Benefit cosmetic bags. I'm not going to drag that out. Um, but just to let you know I do have them. In here there's a booklet with some looks and then if we remove it you've got a Their Real Deluxe Sample Mascara, four eyeshadows, a two-ended eyeshadow um, applicator, one of the mini brushes with a two-sided blush and highlighter, a Benetint, and the Professional. So cute. Oh here Denise just oh. grabbed one because oh, okay. she actually keeps her dog bones in one of them. There's one of them, and I have them in all different kinds, but anyway, I'm not going to, there's no makeup left in them, so I won't necessarily get into those. This is really old. This is going back a ways. This is called the Greetings from Cabana Glamour, your destination makeup kit, and it looks like a little airmail package, and when you open it up, on top is a mirror, and in here is three shadows, bronzer, the po... The Posy Tint, a tiny little mini brush. This is their Some Kind of Gorgeous, which is almost like a tinted balm that they have that looks like this little record. I don't know if they sell that anymore uh, in full size, but they certainly used to. I had it once or twice in full size. Really cute little kit. And my final kit to show you. Uh, it looks like totally old 70s sitcoms. Uh, it's called Do the Right Thing Best and Brightest Total Face Makeup Kit. Uh, it's got a cool stylized hippie girl in San Francisco in the background, which is, of course, the birthplace of Benefit. When you open it up, it has the mirror, and inside an eyeliner, the Their Real Mascara, a small brush, dandelion face powder, high beam highlighter, and that gal face primer all packaged together. Every time they come out with these, I know I have all the products in large, but I can't resist. This year I resisted over the Christmas holidays because I got so much other stuff, but these little packs are really, really cute. And that's it. That is my collection of Benefit Cosmetics. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you're enjoying this collection. Looking at my collection by brand, I just think it's a more interesting and in-depth way to look at the collection uh, in bite-sized pieces. The next brand that I will be doing is Lancome. 
If you have some benefit that I don't have, please tell me about it in the comments below or tweet me a picture and give me a thumbs up. If you dig these, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss that Lancome video coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. It's